Hello everyone, happy Friday and welcome to Build a Powerful Network and Accelerate Your Growth webinar. I'm Vasil Adarov, CEO at Startup Socials and online events producer at Business to Community. Today we have a very exciting presentation for you. We'll have a lot of fun today on Friday afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us. And um, I have a uh, very special guest, uh, Liron Glickman, with me. Liron is an energetic business networking coach, speaker, and award-winning author. She helps entrepreneurs, startups, and business owners around the world to achieve their goals through smart creation and management of authentic business relationships, both online and offline. Liron, how are you today? Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. How are you today, this lovely Friday noon? Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you for joining us from all the way from the East Coast. And um, before we get started, I just want to um, plug in a few reminders here. If you would like to tweet uh, any key takeaways from today's webinar, feel free to use to tweet at, at us directly, as well as you can type all your questions into the chat box located on the left corner of the screen. You can tweet with the hashtag Startup Socials. And also a couple of other reminders if in case you miss a portion of this recording, it will also will be available to you on demand. And I will be sending a follow-up uh, email with a link to the presentation. So with that, I also want to mention that uh, this webinar is brought to you by the Startup Socials. We are a global community of entrepreneurs built to connect and empower people in the startup ecosystem. Speaking of which, before I pass it on to Liron, I would like to take a quick poll and see uh, who is attending our webinar live. So would you mind just submitting an answer here? And we can um, see how Liron and I can customize, uh, hopefully, our talk based on who is in the audience today. All right, so let's give it another five seconds or so. And um, yeah. Uh, we'd like to make it as interactive as possible, so if at any point you have a question, feel free to type it in and we'll address it right away. Okay, so looks like we have more than half people who are here submitted their responses. Let's give it three more seconds. Three, two, one. All right, so let's see. We have uh, a lot of marketers today. We also have some founders, co-founders, CEOs, and uh, entrepreneurs. So it looks like we are going to have an exciting uh, little um, talk today. And uh, as far as we have the target audience that uh, we actually work with as well as Liron. So to give a little bit of structure to our today's presentation, first off, we'll have Liron present on some rules for authentic networking as well as how to perfect your pitch. I will talk about some social roles when it comes to networking and interaction, as well as on how to build community. And in the end, we'll also address some of the questions from the audience. So with that, Liron, please take it away. All righty. Thank you so much. So uh, thanks for the intro. And hello, everybody. Um, it's great to be here. And I just want to emphasize what you just said about the fact that we want it to be very like interactive. So feel free to ask us questions. Of course, we're going to have the actual Q&A part, but feel free to, to interact and say and ask questions as we go. And we either answer them during the, the presentation or at the end. Um, great. So let's start with what I uh, prepared for you guys today. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about um, a few parts, authentic networking, how to perfect your pitch, and also um, how to break the ice with almost anybody. And I'm going to dive into it in a minute because um, there is so much, I guess, authenticity comes in the, in the place where we want to interact with people because we need to achieve some goals. You know, we wanna, everyone wants to get either clients or investors or uh, co-founders, we all have our needs, and, and I really encourage you to write what are your business goals, what are you looking to find, so I'll be happy to read it in the comment in the chat area. Um, and it starts with interaction, so how do we interact authentically and feel good about ourselves and show people who we are? How do we convey what we do in our personal speech, and how do we break the ice? I know, you know, do you, you also feel like kind of uncomfortable when you try to break the ice with people? Basil? 
is probably on mute. He'll be back in a minute. Um, oh, yes, I'm so, here. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I just, okay, I'll, now I'm prepared. I unmuted myself, so I'll, I'll make sure to interact with you. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So just asking about breaking the ice, how do you feel about it? Oh, so I feel that a lot of entrepreneurs have challenges with it. And um, yeah, so that's definitely something that in, uh, in many cases doesn't come naturally. So I'm actually looking forward to learn some, um, some specific strategies from you. So um, I've been networking pretty much for the last three years. And uh, for me, it came with practice, I tell you that. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important. Eventually, it's about practice. You know, practice makes perfect, as they say, and there's no shortcut or easy way. So let's just dive in. And again, I, I encourage you to share your business goals and, and tell us what you are looking for as an entrepreneur or marketers as well. Um, so a little bit about me in short, so you can read it. I won't going to go over everything, but basically I'm a business networking coach and international speaker. I developed the five-pillar method of effective networking, which is a, a process that I teach which helps entrepreneurs, small business owners, students, career-oriented people um, to achieve their goals, relationships, work on their image, on their networking strategy, interpersonal skills, how to maintain relationships, and of course, how to get results. Uh, I was lucky and privileged to work with entrepreneurs and startups from most of the world, a lot of like more than 10 or 11 countries and all continents. Um, I founded a, a networking group in Israel. I write for the Huffington Post and I love people smiling and having a good time. This is it. <laughs> Let's dive in. So, um, uh, 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 okay. So let's start with authentic networking. So how to feel more comfortable and show your strengths and qualities when you communicate with new people. So, you know, eventually when, when, we, when we go and we interact with people, let's take a networking event situation um, or, you know, kind of meetings. Um, it's a lot about how we feel about ourselves. And, and some people, you know, feel really comfortable about bringing themselves out there, but some people not. And when we show authenticity, when we show um, kind of who we are, it usually works better. And people, people sense when it's fake or when it's real. Now, I don't think we can be 100% real when we interact with new people because there are always some kind of, you know, worries or thoughts uh, uh, that, that basically come up. But it, it, we can be more. We can be more authentic. And building relationships is a process that, you know, it's, it's like it's over time. It's built over time. And it works best when the foundation is real and honest. Now, as I said, we all have business goals. And there's always a reason to create a relationship with someone. But the, the foundation, if it's a little personal and real, it works way better. Now, we all have a lot of fears. Uh, everyone has them in a certain extent. Uh, most of us, and I know my me as well, think what what would people what what would people say to me or about me? Does, does, does is this person that I'm speaking with right now does he like me? Does he think I'm this and that? And when we focus on this kind of inner chatter, it really prevents our ability to bring ourselves to this to this chat. So when we create relationship, when we feel more self value and we more accept ourselves, it just goes way better. So when we come real and we connect to who we are, the result is that we're happier, we're still more comfortable, we accept and even forgive ourselves sometimes, and we can enjoy the situation. And, you know, networking is a lot about enjoying the situation, and again, the business world is a lot about meeting people, creating collaborations. And I want to give you a few tools that will help you connect to this authentic place when you meet other people. So kind of like a switch that, that when, you, when you actually activate these tools, you can feel more comfortable about who you are and the amazing things that you have to bring to any relationship or conversation. So let's go through the tools. So this is the first one. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, so how to feel more comfortable? Let me just make sure. Um, yeah, so the first one is choose to talk about topics you're passionate about and that connects you to your, to your identity, authenticity, and true self. So what do I mean by that? So when we talk about a subject that is part of who we are, something that we really feel good about, enthusiastic about, we, our, our truth just comes out, you know, without even worried about it. 
so and and when there's there is this flow of of chat when we speak about something we like also our authenticity comes out so there are different topics that we feel so comfortable to talk about and and so assured about ourselves and we should you should navigate the conversation to talk about these topics and make sure it's topics that other people can relate to so it will create more connections so for example if, if this is like very common for women if you can have kids and you want to talk about your kids this is a subject that most women are very enthusiastic about and always connect uh, women together other topics can be your field of expertise you can probably talk a lot like about what you do uh, is there any sport or another field that you like or find interesting, um, music, food, um, and courses you took and, and you want to talk about. So make sure the conversation also interests the other person, but try like make a, a list of topics that you feel so excited and enthusiastic to talk about because these are the topics that will help you, sorry, New York City, it's a little noisy, that will help you bring your authentic self out there. Um, now, the second one is in authenticity is to prepare two or three stories that show how you achieved something or how you became who you are today. Because, guys, we all remember things and people through stories. Stories are such um, uh, a strong tool to use. So we can use stories to show who we are and also help people connect with us. So here are a few examples. Um, authentic stories can aim to um, relate to the stories can relate to your clients or people that you wish to meet with um, and, and you can, you know, talk to the people by, by telling the story, for example, how you, uh, you did whatever you can to, to meet this person and eventually uh, uh, you did it. So this shows about how um, persistent you are and that you don't take no for an answer and you achieve your goal, but then again, um, you know, so it can show different values about yourself and how people connect to who you really are. Uh, and understand that you're a person that they would like to work with because of X, Y, Z qualities. Uh, you can share how your values were shaped in a story. Some ideas about good stories could be overcoming adversities, um, us versus them stories, successes and failures, of course, life-changing experiences, uh, why one thing happened and that led you to where you are today, people who influenced you, so these are the kind of ideas that I encourage you should definitely um, write down and prepare before you meet people so you'll have them like, you know, in store and, and then you can always uh, pop them up and talk about them. The third thing about authentic networking is to emphasize ways you can help others. Now, guys, there is so much power in giving and helping, and I'm sure you know it, but there is something else when, when you meet someone and you, you feel like you can contribute or help, it also gives you a sense of, of worth and a sense of self-assured um, uh, and, and also uh, authenticity. So if you really want to help someone and you really say it, it will make you feel good and it will connect you and it will emphasize your authentic self. So we all have something to give and here are a few ideas. So if you have a knowledge in a, in a certain field, you can give this knowledge and share advice, Being, um, showing your empathy for someone, share your connections in your industry, um, give access to decision makers, to media outlets, um, and many, many more. So in terms of networking and especially uh, this topic, it only works when it's real. This is the authentic networking. Basil, are you okay? Are you, have you been following? I, I haven't been following the, the questions, but we would love to. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, it's, all, it's all great. So uh, why don't we continue, and then we'll, we'll have a quick interaction after yeah. the first portion of, of the presentation. Sure. So a few two topics. So this is about your personal pitch, my friend. So your personal pitch, basically, the role of a personal pitch, is about presenting the essence of who you are to meet people. Now we have, there is like a very short attention span. Like people have around 30, 30 seconds to, to, to listen to you and to try to pick up who you are. This is why when you present yourself, you should be, it should be short and simple. It should be structured and it should be adjusted, which means if you're a marketing manager and we have a few on the call, so when you meet a client, your pitch probably address the client's need. But if you meet a fellow marketer, your pitch might uh, be more about cooperation or different um, different goals. So 
So a winning personal pitch is about showing who am I and what do I do, then explaining who do I do it for, and the main solution I offer. So here is like you probably can see on the screen, like kind of um, a basic uh, outline of how you can present yourself. And this is very easy because it's structured and it, it taps all the important information. So I can give you an example. So hi, I am, um, let's say, Leroy Glickman, and I'm a business networking expert, and I help entrepreneurs, startups, and business owners to achieve their goals through relationship building. Bam. This is short, and this brings the, the, the main information that people would like to know about me. So I can really uh, encourage you to, to write this, um, uh, this uh, base down. And we want to make it interesting, right? Like we don't want our pitch to, to sound like everybody else's. So here are a few ideas to spice up your pitch. The first one is how you say it, okay? We all say it in a different way. So be enthusiastic. So say like you mean it. And enthusiasm, but be yourself. So and your, at your level of enthusiasm. Also add a smile, it also helps to bring more uh, spice in the pitch. Um, the yes effect. So there is the thing when we say yes to something, so we actually, when, when you ask a question and someone says yes, so it's kind of obligated to hear the, the answer. So let me, let me explain. Um, for example, so you can go to someone and, and just ask a question that leads to who you are. So do you think that managing your finances is important? And the person would answer, yes. Wonderful. So I am this and that, and I, man I can manage your finances for you. There is another question. Just try to find a question that relates to what you do. Wouldn't you like to add another hour to each day? Yes. Okay. So I am this and that, and I am an owner of a time management phone app. So try to use the yes effect on what you do. Social proof, you know, it's like dropping, like name dropping, but in a nice way. We all like to know that what we do, or that, that um, the person we're speaking with has uh, got a, you know, a social proof. So other people like what he's, what he's doing, and this is just basically help us get more credibility. So you can always add to your pitch. You can say, my name is, and I'm this and that, and I'm the owner of this business. Um, and you know, even uh, John Smith, the CEO of this company, really liked the solution my startup provides. Or you can say, our clients are very supportive and love our services. We're very lucky. So here are two examples, and it's important to drop it, you know, not say like you, like, you know, just want to brag about it, but really like as a part of the conversation. Another one is creative job description. So if you remember our, um, so our sentence, instead of saying, I am Leroy Glickman, I'm a business networking coach, and I um, do this and that, you can just say, I'm Aaron Glickman, I am XYZ, and I help people succeed in the game of life. Like, what do you mean? What do you do? I'm, ah, I'm a coach. So if you change the job description to something more interesting and exciting and catchy, people will like be more interested in you. So you can also say, hi, my name is this and that, and my app helps people uh, share their thoughts, emotions, and experience quickly with each other. What do you mean? So what do you do? I own WhatsApp app. So this is um, another example of using a creative job description instead of saying what you really do. And it's important to say, to always think how can this apply to you. Last but not least <laughs> is the breaking the ice. So I have a broad method of attractive and interactive methods to breaking the ice, which means different methods that can help people come to you and, and then which is the attractive ones and then interactive ones where basically you create, um, you break the ice with other people. Now, as we started, breaking the ice is not easy. It does involve with um, experience, with trial. And I think most of my clients always say that they feel fake and they don't feel comfortable. And I want it to be more comfortable and natural. And I'm going to share a few of, of this whole method with you right now in order to help you do it a little easier and a little more natural. So let's start with the Q&A thing. So many conversations and events leave a certain amount of time for Q&As, right? Many conventions, sorry, conventions and events. So those who have questions to ask and who get the spotlight, like the 15 seconds of fame, um, when, when the spotlight's aimed at them for a minute or so, this is where, where you guys can introduce yourself 
um, when you ask a question in a big forum of people, so everyone can enjoy the answer the presenter provides and you can say who you are. So you basically should create a situation where everyone gets value thanks to you. So why not let everyone know who you are as well? So my, my guidelines for this is basically to share your question, but beforehand share your full name and then go, and then share your question. So here's an example. So you can say, hi, my name is John Smith. I'm the founder of X Startup that provides that solution. And my question is this and that. The right people will approach you after the, uh, the Q&A session is over. I can definitely guarantee that. Just make sure to do it authentically and in the right way and not be too salesy. Another method is immediate common ground. Common ground is such an amazing tool. Like we all connect to, to things that are familiar to us. It's so easier for us to engage in a conversation. So you can start, for example, if, like immediate common ground means like engage in a conversation about something that is just close to you, that both of you are experiencing right now. So you can ask people about the buffet, about the, uh, their opinion about the event or the speakers, if they found any interesting connections so far about the decoration, just comment about things that both of you are experiencing right now, as long as they are positive, because you want to make sure the conversation will go on a positive side. So this is how you just break the ice, ask a question, make sure it's positive about something you both experiencing right now, and then, hi, my name is Leon, by the way, what is your name? And take the conversation from there. The last but not least is about assistance. Now, we can ask for assistance, and, and when we ask him for assistance, we kind of start the conversation on, on help, kind of, you know, giving, active giving uh, basics. So there are all kinds of ways to ask for assistance where it is natural and not, you know, too intimidating, and, and then you can introduce yourself. So I like to divide it into directions, items, and clarifications. Which means so you can first time at an event and say, do you know where, where the drink bar is or where are the restrooms? Thank you for your answer. By the way, I am Liron and nice to meet you and let's keep on talking. Um, can you borrow your pen? Could you pass me the salt please? Thank you so much. My name is this and that. And did you hear about what the speaker just said? What time should, should we get back um, from our break? So just try to ask those natural questions and get the conversation going from that point onward. Sorry, it's near speedy. And I cannot control the fire truck. So the key takeaways from this short lecture is let your authentic self shine by leading the conversation to places you feel comfortable at and that represent who you are. Prepare a personal pitch that describes who you are and don't be afraid to dare or be creative and break the ice in a way that feels comfortable and not intimidating and natural. That's me, and thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Liron. And uh, I know that you also prepared a special gift for today at Indies. Here, um, I encourage you to, to go to that URL. And um, actually, uh, I, I have a few questions specifically on that, on the small talk, um, mm -hmm. that free course that you have. So. Um, you mentioned that uh, in the portion of uh, perfecting your pitch, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, there is a formula there about introducing yourself and what you do. Is it something, uh, when, when do you actually introduce yourself? Do you start with a small talk? Do you introduce yourself directly at the networking event? Just imagine yourself. What would you do? You enter the room. The room is full of people uh, having conversations. Everyone is engaged, right? And you just by yourself, trying to break their eyes, break into the conversation? What would be your step-by-step -step process for that? Well, that's a great question. And actually, the full answer is in this course, so I definitely invite you to sign up. This is a three-day, three-video of three-day course. Um, basically, look, there is no, like, you know, it's not like a cookie cutter. Like, every interaction, of course, is different. But there are still some main, um, I would call them phases in each, in, in each meeting. So let's say we're, as you said, in a networking event, there's a lot of people around us, and we're starting to engage in a conversation with someone. So the first part of the conversation is the intro, then the connection, then the continuity. So the intro part is, you know, the order is not necessarily the same, but 
the insofar is first of all we read the other person's body language. We may might you know shake hands, we introduce yourself. Now it's not a, it doesn't necessarily happen in the same order, but you know we first of all we assess the, the person that 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 is in front of us. So you should find the right time to introduce yourself. Uh, sometimes coming you know up front and say hi, I'm this and that is just too much intimidating. So you should be sensitive enough to know when is the right time to to introduce yourself within the initial interface. Then the connection part is like when you actually speak and you create more um, uh, connection and bond and um, good report with the other person. And then if you want to continue the conversation, you just make sure to do the continuity part. So I hope I, uh, I, I answered yeah, the question. <laughs> it totally makes sense. And just to build on that, by the way, if you would like to tweet, I hope everybody got uh, the URL right. But if not, I'm going to send it via follow-up email. If you would like to tweet, uh, anything from today's webinar. If you find any of those key takeaways valuable, feel free to let us know. Uh, just to build up on what you just said, Leron, one of the things that I realized that was really useful for me going to tons and tons of networking events here in Silicon Valley, and I prefer to go by myself. I think this is the right way to go because if you go with friends, you end up talking to them the whole evening, and you don't really meet new people or valuable connections at all. So what I usually do, I usually approach a group of people, and uh, the number one thing is just really get yourself comfortable with the environment. If you feel comfortable, people wouldn't think that you are creepy approaching a group of people, even there, they're engaged in the conversation. And one of the first steps for me was to really get comfortable with myself, and when they don't feel the nervous energy from you, you don't even have to say anything. The conversations just start. That's what ended up happening. So, um, and uh, yeah, so just uh, on breaking the ice. And just before I uh, start my own presentation, I also wanted to get into your Q&A spin portion. I thought it was really interesting. Can you give an example which situation you actually um, recommend using that Q&A spin? Because um, I wouldn't imagine that you will be using that asking a question from a stranger, right, at the networking event, a specific question, or is that the case? Thanks for referring to that if it wasn't so clear. So the idea of the Q&A spin is basically when you're at a convention or at an event with a lot of people. So let's say you're, you know, you're in a big convention and, and you cannot really, like, it's impossible to meet everyone, of course, always. But if you want to create an advantage for yourself, then if you're in the hall, you know, someone is speaking, and then I, I'm, I'm talking like when, when you're actually sitting, you know, in, the, in the, at the venue itself, listening to someone speak, maybe there's a panel on the stage, and then they say, okay, Q&A, who wants to ask questions? So this is where you can stand up, introduce yourself again, not be too early, very short, and then ask your question. Because at this moment, people can listen to you and see, okay, this guy is doing this and that. Maybe I should approach him after the Q&A session is over. And yeah, that's how you basically attract people to you. Oh, it totally makes sense. And especially asking the right question, so which mm -hmm. almost give you, give you that media attention. And uh, if the question is very relevant, if you properly introduce yourself and speak with authority, uh, it's a, it could be a huge benefit to get featured almost as a speaker in front of the audience, right? That's a great point, definitely. definitely. And one of the things just to add to this, I feel that a lot of people who ask questions at the conferences and events, sometimes what they fail, they don't wait until the microphone is handed to them and they don't introduce themselves. So this is going back to really uh, those fails uh, when you try to get the exposure. Because um, first, uh, the question is not being recorded properly. If you don't have a microphone, nobody can hear you, and then people don't know who you are. So don't, don't do that. Great point. Great point. Be aware of how people perceive you when you, when you speak as well. Yeah. Okay. And with that, Liron, I'll just give it, uh, hand it off to you, the chat moderation uh, portion, um, and I will uh, provide a little bit of an insight on um, how we uh, how we manage and uh, produce networking events at Startup Social. The way we started is from a small Silicon Valley mixer for 20 people with an idea to connect entrepreneurs, founders, co-founders, and we grew into larger events with 15 chapters around the world, 
throwing uh, parties, mixers, and smaller private networking events for entrepreneurs, founders, co-founders, as well as marketers, which we have many here on today's call. So what I'm going to cover today is a networking formula that I found that works every single time if you really like to get value from a networking event that you attend. Then um, something that might be interesting for our attendees today, some social labels that I found are really beneficial if you um, take on that role and play it in the social environment, such as social architect and super connector. And I will wrap up with the next steps when you're completely comfortable with networking uh, that would uh, allow you to really build your powerful network by building your own community. So I wrote that article on business to community recently, and uh, I'm going to send you a link. So I'm not going to bore you going over uh, each every single point here. But the idea behind it, I got really frustrated with all of the networking events because I felt that here in Silicon Valley, for example, uh, and I know that we have many attendees joining from all over the world, there's always that disconnect when you enter the room. A um, uh, person who checks you in gives you a sticky label, a badge, and then, especially if you're by yourself, you really don't know who to approach. You just observe the room. Some people are here not necessarily for networking. A lot of people here for beer and pizza, especially in the startup world. So I was trying to figure out what would be the best way to make uh, networking efficient, both from the perspective of myself hosting a networking event as well as from perspective of attending a not, not networking event. So if you're just networking for the sake of uh, just meeting new people or uh, introducing yourself to new people, it's a very bad goal in my opinion. And uh, I think the best way uh, to go about it is to really Put it on the paper. What is your goal of attending a, a very specific particular event? It could be, for example, if you're a startup, to find a potential founder or co-founder. If you're a marketer looking for a job, it could be finding a job for a reputable brand or connect with a colleague, uh, another marketing director, and discuss uh, particular marketing challenges that you might have. So one of your, uh, after you identify your big goals, you narrow it down to who will be at the event. And we did a lot of surveys that, uh, uh, in, uh, we sent a lot of surveys to our startup socials community. One interesting thing that we found out that number one reason why people actually attend networking event, first, because they have time. Entrepreneurs and marketers are extremely busy. Second, uh, the reason uh, is actually people who will be at the event. And only the third one is content. So try to find out who are the people who will be at the networking event. And finally, try to find out what kind of value you can bring to them. For example, a lot of um, networking events that I personally attend, I usually aim to meet an event organizer because I like to meet other community builders and all uh, or, uh, organizers so we can figure out the way how we can uh, build and uh, engage our community together. So I usually, uh, that, that's my primary goal, just as an example. So to, little, to expand on that, social architect is something that we invented here in Startup Social. It's actually a person who connects others at the networking events. For example, this is Claudia. She's a, a social architect at the Startup Social Mixer that took place about a year ago. So what she's doing here, she's connecting to founders that have a very similar background and uh, they uh, potentially, uh, based on our research that we have done, and this is something that Social Architect also does, we realize that it's beneficial for both of them to meet together. And what she does, she not focuses her attention on herself. She just uh, connects them and then she moves to the next uh, person who she uh, and needs to get connected. And uh, that's pretty much her role. And when you provide that much value by connecting people at the networking event the whole time, believe me, it's, uh, it will be a huge benefit for you uh, in general because people would remember that. And uh, going a little bit deeper, uh, diving a little bit deeper, um, after you m master the art of being a social architect, the next level is super connector. Those people are usually not only uh, good socially, but they also domain and niche experts when it comes to a specific, um, sp 
specific niche or the, the nature of your business. For example, if you are a lawyer, right? If you are a startup lawyer, this is a very specific niche. And you go to a networking event and you can mentor uh, entrepreneurs, your potential customers, uh, sharing with them um, free uh, advice without expecting anything in return. Eventually, they would remember you when they would need your services. And then uh, those super connectors who are connecting people based on their specific needs and goals and who are domain experts, they have a, a huge potential of becoming industry leaders and thought leaders down the road. So I'm going to skip one slide here for the sake of time. I want to make sure we have time to address, uh, to dive into Q&A after this presentation. But uh, so after you attended several networking events, after you uh, practiced uh, the art of social architect and super connector in general, one of the things that I would recommend is to build your own community around you. So uh, by going to networking events, you already understand your audience. You know how to help your audience, and eventually you become in that go-to person that people always uh, reach out to when they need uh, either an introduction or um, an advice. So you want to be that person. And that's how you build trust. Because before you do anything with your community, before you engage your approach or you provide any value proposition and down the road potentially uh, service a product for your community, you have to build that trust. And a lot of people think that you have to shoot for the stars and uh, have a, try to target a very large community on the first place. But what, it's really, what it really starts with is uh, 100 of your true friends hundreds of people, or sometimes it could be even 10, of those who are really passionate about what you do, who share the same vision, who are part of the same uh, sub-segment or social group that you belong. So that's the one that you need to have conversations first. So going just last week, I, had, uh, I was given a workshop on community building, and we talked about a few interesting things on how to build community fast, how to generate that first 100 friends and, uh, or 10 uh, friends that will help uh, spread, the, uh, spread the word about your community. So one of the things that came up is really blogging. And this is a good way to start. However, I feel that it's not, actually it's not a good way to start. It's a good way to, um, to build a thought leadership, but it's a very long shot and long-term strategy. So one of the things that uh, from my previous experience I realized in terms of building a powerful network, building a personal brand, expanding your growth, the fastest way is actually to host your own events. And it could be a small meetup. It could be a small networking mixer. And um, one of the actionable steps here before we go into, we get back to the networking part and um, Liron and I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have here. I just wanted to share one actionable step that you can do today to get your first community member. And, and each of you, I'm sure, has a product or service that, um, or potentially planning to start a company or maybe a part of the company that already have products and services that have some very loyal and um, very loyal customers. So. Uh, what I recommend uh, doing for those customers, if you're not doing that already, is actually hosting a small event. And with that, you can really very quickly start it uh, on meetup.com, which has 22 million members right now, over 2,000 groups. It takes about, uh, I would say, maybe 20 minutes to set up the whole meetup and in, get your first um, community members on board. So um, this is just something that where you can get started on the community building end. And uh, this is an example of uh, a meetup of a person who organized it about, I think, three or four days ago. And she uh, got that 15 members. It looks like she, the, the meetup is um, weekly meditation, which we could see the community leader here. Seems like she ha has been meditating for quite a bit. So uh, people can identify themselves with her. And uh, that's how you start on the community building part. So um, I'm going to just a recap of 
uh, with everything that we talked about today and uh, uh, in terms of the actionable steps. Liron talked about how to perfect your pitch. Then one of the advice is to really go to networking events, become a social architect and super connector, and then build your community. I also would like to invite everybody who attended uh, today's webinar to join, especially those of you who are in San Francisco. Um, actually, a lot of people are not in San Francisco, so uh, definitely, definitely recommend uh, some of the. Uh, I will recommend a few webinars, and uh, to, to to those of you who are not uh, in San Francisco Bay Area, but for those who are, I hope to see you next week at the Startup Socials Mixer, and I'll, I'll be sending you an invitation next week so hopefully you can connect with fellow entrepreneurs and marketers over there. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them into the chat box. And uh, Liron and I will have about uh, five minutes before we wrap up. We'll be happy to address those. So um, Liron, do you have any questions? Do you want to expand on any community building while we're waiting for questions? Yes, I wanted to say a few things. First of all, I love what you, um, your presentation and the important information that you shared. I think a, a great point was about um, to, to kind of plan your event in advance, and I call it like create your event game plan. So you can research, as you said, about who will attend the event. Even check who are the guests, who are the speakers, who are the sponsors. Maybe sometime a sponsor is a company or a person that you want to meet with. Another thing is about uh, taking action, as you said, hosting an event, hosting your own meetup, even opening your own uh, LinkedIn group. But you know what? Um, I know there's a lot, but not everyone feels so comfortable to do so. And I can say also about myself when I started my, my path, it's not easy to, you know, to necessarily do it. So I encourage you to take a friend, take an accountability friend that you can support on his path and he can support you. That can really help you get better results and, and really influence your uh, your community and share the great thing that you have to share with them. Yeah, I agree. And uh, actually, just to echo on that note, specifically if you're hosting your first event, uh, a lot mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs and uh, as well as uh, other community leaders who are just starting out approach me and they ask me, so how do I get a good guest to join uh, a webinar? How do I find a speaker? Who am I to just you know, even talk in front of the people, right? So this is something that you really need to get rid of, all of those limiting beliefs. And if you are really passionate about topic or you are a niche expert on in a very specific niche, um, you know probably a lot about your product and service. You are the one who you can host an event, and when you, uh, let's say you set up a meetup, you have about 20 people who are RSVP to that event, and it's really easy to achieve. So uh, this is some, uh, what I would encourage you is to reach out to uh, someone who is uh, award-winning author or who is a New York Times best-selling author and just saying, hey, I have that community members who would love to see you speak. And you will be surprised. Uh, in so many cases, uh, those big names, they would be ready to accept and speak in front of the very small group of people, which would add a lot of credibility to you. And just by you introducing that person on stage will also position you as an authority. That's so, such a great tip. And as you said, a lot of big shot people are so happy to come and help. And I think a lot of people in general, you know, really help to come and share. Some, everyone likes and enjoys to share what they have to say to the world. So it's like a win-win-win situation. Everyone can win. You approach this um, authority. He comes to you. You raise your own personal brand. Everyone's enjoyed. Yeah, so I wanted to actually have a question here from the audience. So one of the guys was wondering, he was um, at the event uh, the other week, at the networking event, and he got approached by an engineer who was trying to pitch him a uh, mobile app of the bat without basically introducing himself. What, what would be your advice to that uh, engineer? And uh, I guess obviously follow your three-step <laughs> method, but 
what would be that specific uh, advice that uh, maybe – how would you even start working with that person, let's say, if he would be your client? I think the question should be, would you like to work with that person? You know, he might be a great person. He might be a very good person. But I also experienced something like that when I was at an event and someone came with an, with an iPad and, hi, this is my product. Would you like to buy it? And, and I, I don't know, you know, you need to, you need to first of all, create the, the no like, and trust factor. And this is why we need to kind of schmooze and, and, and talk at the beginning and say our names and introduce ourselves. Then we get to know the person. Then as the conversation goes by, we may even get to like the person. And then at some point, we would trust and want to, you know, to stay in touch with this person. You know what I'm saying? So you, you have the right to choose who you want to get it, to bring into your life. And sometimes just starting a conversation like that can really ruin um, for this person who just didn't know how to do it right. And he might be a great person with a great product, but you need to make your own, I guess, to think who you want to, to get into your circle, into your network. Yeah, it makes sense. And speaking of which, also, how do you how do you escape some of the converse, time wasting conversations? Because uh, <laughs> of, obviously you you would like to be polite, and uh, let's say you and I have my own opinion on that, but I wanted to yeah. hear yours when uh, you you are part of the conversation and oh, you got into it, and then you just realize it's not leading anywhere. Exactly. So I'm just looking as we speak. I'm looking for my article about useful exit tactics to end a conversation. That, that, that can give you like I think around 18 or 20 different sentences you can actually use to exit a conversation. I will, uh, one second. Let me, um, I'll just paste the link as we speak. Yeah, and shoot me that link as well because what I'll do right now, I'll prepare an email. Uh -huh. We'll have uh, a lot of people who will watch that webinar on demand who are not able to join us on Friday night, a uh, Friday mm -hmm. evening. So um, we'll we'll have that presentation pre-recorded. So I'll I'll make sure to send all the resources to everyone. That's fantastic. So I'll send it to you, and I just you can also see it in the chat box. So you know, there's a lot of ways, but I think the the the, basic, the rule of thumbs are first of all to be respectful, as you said. We meet we meet this person. Maybe he doesn't mean to be annoying, but that's what happened, and we might gonna see him again. Um, we should try to leave a good taste, you know, like end it with a smile or you know or a nice word. Uh, but sometimes we need to be assertive. So, you know, um, I would say thank you so much. That's been very interesting. But I, I would I would like to see I'll, – I'll see you later. I would like to go and see some more people. Or there is someone I need to, to meet here. So it was wonderful speaking with you. And I have your card. I will be happy to tell you. So find your own way how to be respectful, how to leave a good taste, but then say what you have to say. And you can definitely uh, try my link and, and just go and read all those, like, 18 – different sentences you can use. Yeah, and I'll, I'm actually copying and pasting it for myself. <laughs> read it the first thing after this uh, webinar. But one of the things that I realized for myself, I always had a very hard time doing that. Uh -huh. So one of the rules that I invented for myself, if I'm already in that type of conversation, I failed. So when I go to networking <laughs> events, <laughs> I always try to meet the people that I really uh, – you know, need to be talking to, who I can help achieve their business goals or who can help me. And sometimes it doesn't happen that way, but if you're really strategic about networking, if you know in your goals, one of the things, for example, you can do, you can schedule a meeting at the networking event, which I started to do quite frequently. Instead of um, exactly. meeting during the regular um, hours, I schedule a meeting at the networking event. And when uh, what I'm doing, I'm bringing... Um, uh, be my business partner to a networking event, which is hopefully has a great environment, some great people. And uh, not only I uh, have a meeting with that partner, I also do a little bit of research on who else will be at the event, and I introduce that partner to other people. So that's mm -hmm. something that works for me. And if you're really talking to a lot of people, um, of course, here and there, uh, some people would approach you and you don't really want to brush them off and um, you know, be really rude, but that decreases the chances of you being in the conversations that are not relevant. 
you know, I love what you say because I think the strategy part is so important. Like we have a business plan. We have a marketing plan. Why won't we have a networking plan? And that could be like a yearly networking plan or even an event-based networking plan. And, you know, I'm sure people ask you, you know, like tell you that I always go to networking events and nothing never happened. I just spend time. But if people would have – I would ask, just like you say, be more prepared. Have a certain role for the event. They would feel that they got something out of it. So those two, three, four hours weren't for nothing. So they, they had the goals. They met those people. And, you know, I usually have at least two to three people goals at any event. So once I reached them, I said, okay, so this was a well-spent time, you know. And then Absolutely. keep it going. So I think I really emphasize what you just said. It's so important. Any more yeah, tips that you have? Uh, any more tips? Uh, well, let me think what about your, that. What is your best um, opening sentence? Uh, is, is there any like uh, specific sentence that you use? Um, or question that you I, like to use? You know, it's interesting. I actually, uh, what I try to do when I approach a group of people, for example, and I, usually I like to approach a group of people, I listen to conversation first. Mm -hmm. I never really introduce myself off the bat at all because I only introduce myself when it's really uh, relevant and uh, what ends up happening, people acknowledging me. And... Um, I carry on the conversation and only say something when I can add value to it. And then uh, at some point, uh, when I feel that the time is right, when the social dynamic and conversation, I actually introduce myself when I see, and this <laughs> goes along mostly when, uh, to the, uh, when I like to network with strangers, right? So this is, I'm putting myself mm -hmm. in that uh, uh, shoes of a person who, uh, uh, who, let's say, for example, I'm in the new city, right, or uh, it just ended up to be that I don't have a specific person to meet, so um, which it shouldn't be the case. Uh, but uh, I don't introduce myself off the bat. So, and I usually, what I like to do, I like to exchange LinkedIn uh, information rather than business cards because I personally feel that I never had any success with business cards in general. I have a bunch of them laying right now in my drawer, and I don't know what to do with them. So if I really um, – one of the things that I do if I need somebody, I try to shoot that person an email uh, from my cell phone right away or connect with that person on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I see. This is a great, this is a great way. And I think on, on, this, on this note, it's important to be active, you know, a lot of – like take action. You know, I think most of my connections, like most of the time I meet people and exchange information, I am the one who sends the email. So most people just don't take action. And, and it can be for many different reasons. But, um, you know, just don't wait and don't feel like why the person didn't call or why, you know, he said you will do something or not. If you want something, just take action and just go for your goals and, and for relationship building. And, um and yeah, I think this is like this is a very important rule. Like there is so much, you know, in this whole relationship building um, world. And and as you said, listening it's a very very important core basic skill uh, that really help us connect to other people. Yeah, um, have, speaking on the relationship building, just to build on that a little bit and following up, which is crucially important. And uh, sometimes. I feel that the worst case that you can do, let's say you asked for the introduction uh, from someone and somebody provided you an introduction to a person that you really want to get connected to, then you just really wait a day or two before you follow up. So I've noticed that it happens sometimes. So Because not only you jeopardize your relationship with the person who introduces you, you also show the other person who you're being introduced to that you probably don't really need it that much, right? So that's something that uh, I just want to add there. And I personally, it happened to me when I've done it, and sometimes I have those nightmares in the shower when I'm, I'm, I'm just remembering that I totally forgot to follow up with someone, but which leads to a long... Uh, explanation yeah. later. But those things might seem that they're not very important, but they're crucially important. Yeah, yeah, it's important. You know, 
It happens. First of all, it's up, it happens to everybody. But then again, yes, it's important to to kind of I agree with you because if someone introduces you to someone, um, you know, he wants he wants to help you. He wants to benefit you, or he thinks he can benefit you. And even if he doesn't help, you know, just being just being you know respectful and and answering this email. Um, but generally speaking, you know, getting um, following up is an important topic that we didn't really get the time to, to speak about. But um, eventually, it's, it's all about, you know, the long run and, how, and who you choose and how you maintain relationships. And you don't have to be in touch every day and, you know, be creepy. But set your own system. There are all kinds of apps that are out there to help us do it. But I really encourage you to set your own systems, how and, and maybe Excel sheets or use different apps. And see how you can follow up with people every now and again. You know, you don't, you can never know where the right people will come from, where the right deal, where the right opportunity. And just keep keep your, your good network uh, close to you. Great. And uh, I think we just have one more time for one more question here. Chi Chi uh, Oh, my God. I'm sorry. My friend Chi Chi, she's a, she's a networking um also, the networking expert, sorry, from Atlanta, Georgia, and she won a group there. How are you, Chichi? Oh, <laughs> awesome, Chichi. If I'm sure, if Chichi could hear us, he he would say hello. But uh, he just typed in the question via chat. So the question is: Once you have built trust with someone at the event, how do you ask for something without sounding needy? Hmm, interesting question. What do you? What is your answer? If you have, you want to answer that. So my answer is don't ask for anything uh, first. <laughs> so when you build trust, uh, instead of asking for something, just try to help first. And then uh, in the future, when you feel that you really establish the relationship with the person and you're very comfortable with the person, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't be even thinking, I think, how to ask. Because mm -hmm. if you really build your network and if you have a strong, powerful network, you should just ask without any hesitation, because uh, and some people uh, they would uh, would take some time for some people to make that in, inner circle where you can um, actually uh, ask for any anything without any hesitation. For some of them, mm -hmm. they are would be in your circle much faster. But I think it all depends how many people you you help and how much you you help others. And then, uh, so you you can trust those people to be here for uh, to be there he here for you when you need them. If it makes sense. Beautiful. I really agree with you. And I want to add on that that first of all, it's also about how you feel with yourself. Do you feel needy? And I'm sure, like you know, um, like there's no need to come across as a needy person. Um, I do agree, like you said, I, I like to help. I'm a helper, I'm a giver, and I, I, I feel more comfortable and I like to help first before I ask. But, you know, I came to a situation recently that I, I, I just moved from Israel to New York City. I'll tell you the story uh, a few months ago. And I came to a place where it's not my natural playground and I, needed, I need to ask more than I usually ask in Israel. Usually in Israel, I'm the one who helps and gives the whole connection. And now I'm in a position where I really need to ask for help. And, and I do it, I never, never even felt like it's in a needy way. You know, I just explained the situation and knew it was like that, that this is what I'm looking for. If you think you can help me or know someone, that would be great. I will really appreciate it. But I don't feel and don't, first of all, it's about feeling and then it's about what you say. I don't come across as like, you know, there's so many people out there. So the help will come from some people that I know. Um, so, you know, when, when you create this authentic, uh, you know, when, I guess it's also about how you feel about yourself. Like you go out there, you enjoy the conversation, you try to really feel comfortable with the person you're speaking with, and then you can feel comfortable to ask a question. And even if you don't feel comfortable, and I can say that I met some people, and sometimes I just force myself to say, to just ask what I need, because right now I need something and I want to ask for it. And I know that thousands of other times I was the one who was helping others. So it's okay to take control and just say what you feel. That's totally fine. Just go for it. Yeah, and actually it's a great point. I, I haven't thought about this uh, from that angle, and I totally agree that if you need something, you just need to ask for it. It's not, there is no 
uh, you know, if you feel that you will be uh, needy by asking that, maybe it's because you have been needy, uh, you just have to authentically ask for help and uh, knowing that that person uh, that you can trust who is a part, part of your trustworthy network, that you, if that person would be in the same situation as you are, you would help that person without any questions and a second thought. So we, we, from that perspective, I totally agree with you, Liron. And unfortunately, we ran out of time, actually, <laughs> running oh, two no. minutes after. <laughs> yeah, it was such a great conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Startup Socials webcast uh, series. And uh, I also wanted to th uh, thank all of the attendees here t uh, for being with us. So we'll be sending some more information uh, with Liron resources as well as mine. And uh, looking forward to seeing you at the next uh, uh, at the next webinar. And uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you all. Thanks for everything. All right. Have a good, uh, great weekend, Liron, and everyone. You too.